Oh, yeah. So why shouldn't he do it? Right. Well, it's thick, but... Well, I still don't know. I was in the car thing. I was expecting a call back to work. <laughs> Wednesday, cloudy, or, uh, or snow. Or over it, you know, use a different tape to send me the show, but... I just showed, I just showed you don't take no photos. You're going to break your defeat again? Like you, you did it again? Are you harassing me? No, I'm not. You, did you I'm follow not. me? How'd you, how'd you I know? spot you right there, right there in the corner. Yeah, yeah. I did. What's your first and last name? I don't have to say it. Oh, I couldn't hear you famous, bro. That's what you're taking for. It's nothing else. So you're famous, bro. But I still got Do rights it. as a man. Okay, I, I still got rights you. as a man. I'll stop you. But you're famous, bro. I know. You just get a photo right now and I'm going to leave. I don't want to take a photo anymore. You ain't taking no more photos. Until okay. anybody else, they ain't taking no more photos. I don't That's talk to everybody right. else. You want me to follow you and your wife? Let me take pictures of your wife. I'm gonna start taking pictures of your wife. I'm gonna start taking pictures of your wife. told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. Drugs. Some of the big kids do them. So it's tough for us younger now. But my mom and dad helped get this D.A.R.E. anti-drug program in our school. It's run by specially trained police. Now, now we're, we're saying, saying no to, to drugs. Get D.A.R.E. in your kid's school, too, by visiting Country Style Donuts. Purchase the D.A.R.E. Bear and show you care. Proceeds go to D.A.R.E. in your community. Please welcome the young, the beautiful, the talented Lark Voorhees. Yeah. I have no worries myself, nor do I um, exude, exhibit, or uh, possess within my living uh, strata, stratus um, any reason why someone should worry in my behalf. It's just, it's, it's not, it's completely fictional. He was, he was funny, he was like, you girl. <laughs> oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. This is great. Yeah. I made it down the steps. Oh my gosh. Were you worried about those stairs? Yeah, you know, you gotta make your entrance right. You I know that would be embarrassing. Trip. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had anything like that happen to you? Uh, uh. Hi. <laughs> I'm Brittany Murphy, and um, we're right now at the Blockbuster Video Store, yeah. which. It's pretty busy this time of day at 51st and 8th Avenue. <laughs> New York City, <laughs> center of the universe, greatest city on earth. <laughs> and I'm here to uh, pick out some good videos, my favorite videos. I'm overworked, I'm overtired, and I can relax and watch the things that I love. So come on, we'll have fun. I've already shed some light on philosophical phenomena erupted from popular culture and I gladly take a step further by talking about the profound meaning of these different colored pills people extensively talk about on the internet. Although it isn't uncommon to use pills as symbols for certain states of awareness, the best known example is a scene from the movie The Matrix. 
In this scene, the protagonist Neo is offered a red pill and a blue pill. By swallowing the blue pill, one remains in blissful ignorance. But by swallowing the red pill, one is exposed to the brutal truth of life. Throughout the years, people began to attribute more meaning to the red and blue pill and even expanded the philosophy with several other colored pills like the black pill and the purple pill. Ah, that's my nephew Scruff reading that comic book. Improving my mind. Give me your magic zapper and I'll improve your mind. Hey, that's me! Look inside. It's about the adventures you have coming home from school. Uh-oh. It gives tips on what to do about bullies, finding drugs, or trouble on the bus. And it shows what happens to Scruff. What happens? What happens? Smoke You'll see for your free mirror. copy, write McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652, okay, and help me take a bite out of crime. Meaning what? something what? designed to trick you. Our second report tonight also comes out of the White House, and it has to do with a bad job. The President's National Security Council has reached a conclusion that many other Americans reached some time ago. The U.S. military effort to interdict cocaine in the air or on the high seas has been an enormously costly failure. Here's ABC's Richard Gisbert. The idea of using the U.S. military to help intercept drug smugglers is under review because so far the drug runners are winning. Um, I don't know when I'm coming back. I'm just, I'm into, I have so many different ventures, and I'm, I'm into the music business now. Are you really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, I an artist. I have a, a, a tremendous artist, and then Trevine uh, um, Howard, and she's tremendous, and she needs a little bit more season when she gets to the top of her game. Everybody else is going to have to compete for second place and be happy with it. She's totally awesome. Hopefully, you know, people's been helping me out. Um, Wycliffe's been helping me out. Devontae Swing's been helping me out. And hopefully Puffy helped me out, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, that's the first, that's the first I, I've heard about that. That's great, though. It's great. I believe so, yeah. yeah but but, I, but I, I mean, for, for me as a fan and all the people out there, I just, I just hope the day comes soon that you do return to the ring. You, you are the best that's been there. And, you know, if, if, it's, if it's in the card... It'll happen. I'm okay. Van ain't bad either. You know, I'm okay. Yeah. No, Van ain't bad, but, you know. If you say... Like I said, that's what me to you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. What are we doing, man? Let's talk about this guy. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about Puff. Now, do you go, you go to the shows? You check him out? Yeah, I've been to two of the concerts. Yeah. To the concerts. Tanner up. Tanner up. Yeah. Tanner up. 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 Tanner up.
But fast oh, forward a decade right and Blockbuster ceased to exist, having filed for bankruptcy with over $900 million in debt. So what happened? with everyone uh, with absolute integrity. Talk about my compensation. You know, if I step on somebody's throat on the way, that doubles it. Well, I'll stomp on the guy's throat. <laughs> Blockbuster was founded by David Cook, a software supplier in the oil and gas industry. After studying the potential of a video store business for a friend, he realized that a well-franchised chain could grow to 1,500 units. And so the first Blockbuster store opened in Dallas on October 19, 1985. According to David Cook, the opening night of that first Blockbuster store was a huge success. The story goes that they actually had to lock the doors because of overcrowding. The thing that really set Blockbuster apart at that time was their huge range of titles. Other independent video stores could only keep track of 100 or so movies. Blockbuster had an innovative new barcode system which meant that they could track up to 10,000 VHSs per store to each registered customer. Customer, which also meant that they could keep an eye on those lucrative late fees. We are the good Off the back of this success, Cook built a $6 million distribution center. Not only so that new stores could pop up quickly, but also to house a huge range of titles so that each store's inventory could be tailored to local demographics. But one of the issues with social media, it's been pointed out by many people, is that I think maybe particularly Instagram, um, People look like they have a much better life than they really do. Right. So By design. Yeah, people are posting pictures of when they're really happy. They're modifying those pictures to be better looking. Um, even if they're not modifying the pictures, they're at least selecting the pictures for the best lighting, the best angle. Um, so people basically seem uh, uh, they're way better looking than they basically really are. Right. Um, and they're way happier seeming than they really are. So if you look at everyone on Instagram, you might think, man, they're all these happy, beautiful people, and I'm not that good looking and I'm not happy. 99% of people who are watching this do more cool shit and then you'll have cool shit to talk about. Like, raise your hand and wave at me if you feel like you have competitors in your niche and it's discouraging. Context and then content at scale around that context. I still remember my principal saying that you probably should go to Air Force Academy because you're guaranteed a job after you graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I chose not to take his advice. Yeah. And I didn't. And so they did a lot of suffering with the family and plenty of occasions for it with 40 relatives around and something was always going on. And I felt like I could really be part of that. But then I, I remember very distinctly, that's the reason that I wanted to leave, because I didn't want to be just doing that, which I saw all around me as I was growing up. I thought, you know, nothing outside the box is happening here. People are just being, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally all in favor of, you know, people and families who uh, are on the phone all day with the latest person's accident or the latest person's diagnosis of this or that and what are we going to do and the plans for this and that. I actually love all that stuff and when I'm there I'll be in the kitchen you know, with the, mostly the women talking about this rather than the men watching a game in the, in the other room. I'm torn because I love that. But I also distinctly knew that I had to get away from that, uh, that, I, that, they, uh, that I couldn't let that consume me. Because at the end of the day, I always believed with those people who say the one thing that you can't live with at the end of the day is the things that you might have done. You know, the wishing that you had done a lot of stuff that you didn't do. Well, I'll never have that problem. You know, all of my dreams have become uh, plans and, and or movies or books or trips. You know, they, I just always did something about them and somehow it's all worked out. I go to family reunions, but I'm not, I'm not going to stay for four weeks. Uh, and I'm not being drawn into all that except at the big moments. And uh, maybe it's total selfishness. I think there is an element of selfishness in creativity. Um, and selfishness is, is maybe a, just an ordinary word for it, but there might be more euf euphemistic words for it. Uh, 
self-determination or something. Narcissism would be the worst word for it because there are a lot of narcissists in the creative world who are mostly unbearable, I think. But um, you do have to be willing to be yourself, which a lot of people are not prepared to do. Uh, a lot of people are nervous when you do it and, and try to keep you from doing it because they really wish they could do it, but they don't have the courage to do it because there aren't any, um, there aren't any uh, railroad tracks that mark it out clearly. You know, how are you going to get to where you're going? I don't know. Well, then that's, that's very, no. Don't you think that's very troubling? Uh, I think it's very exciting. Yeah, I don't think it's troubling. I think it's exciting. I think I can do it. And uh, that makes people nervous. You know, people who are doing their thing in a continent way, a continent of reason, traditional way, they're nervous when people are going to live above a garage and practice, you know, the drums until they're famous. That makes them nervous. And probably, well, it should. I mean, if my own daughter had told me she wanted to be an actress, I would have, you know, no, please. I would try have not have said that directly, but I would have had the same feelings that people have. So I, I think that you, uh, you have to be willing to be yourself. And my justification or rationalization for that is that, you know, the universe, if you believe in any kind of a higher force, did create you. And if you're not doing the thing that you're dreaming of doing, then you're failing not just yourself, but the whole universe. The rest of us, too. Like if you're a storyteller and that's what you're meant to be and you're not telling stories because you're afraid of this or that, um, then you failed yourself, you failed your dream, and you failed all of us to whom your story might be life-saving or the funniest story they ever heard. And you failed the universe that created you to dream about telling stories. You may not think five thousand dollars for your investment. Today, your investment is going to be awesome. Hello, since a recent creative video has been super popular, life guru Bill Gates, and today I want to share this with you. This experience, I think, is extremely valuable. In December of 2021, I was in an interview with Dave Narcisse, a Wall Street artist, and he told me all the things that I'm growing more in the secondary. Well, there were a bunch of people who gave me little nuggets of information that were history something that was. The one that has been stuck in my head lately is if this concept. We want it to be excellent. Now you want to take your 200 grand and go to the back and pay people often refuse quality and price. It's always counterintuitive. See what you like, but you should be able to do it by a team. That's when it really is. I'm going to end up with some time. Yeah, if you really get the kind of guess you thought that it was better, you should do that. We want to value who we sold to more than how much it sold for. Being placed in a prestigious collection is always helpful for an artist's career. Most successful galleries have built on the Castelli model, understanding that we can allow an artist to outlast market shifts and trends. When it's an ideal path for creation in general and ultimately bringing something new and potentially innovative into the world, once we as an artist have a clearer perspective on the creative process, we'll understand that copying, inspiration, stealing, paying homage, all of these things can kind of be one and the same. I don't feel like I need to give some philosophical history lesson to hammer this. And um, told me the situation and what they were dealing with and how they had made really big commitments going into the third that the second film's lack of success did not justify. They, but they were contractually obligated to certain escalations in people's pay. They were shooting in different countries all over the world. Um, so they asked if I would um, take a look at the, they wanted me to look at the first two films, then they wanted me to break down the third one, just from my perspective. And it was, it was heavy CGI, you know, it was a big tentpole studio movie, it's not what I do. <laughs> 